Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's good. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khairan. You are welcome, you all. Uh, I think, uh, uh, inshallah, we'll be concluding this uh, chapter today, uh, chapter 12, expression. And we'll be moving forward, inshallah, to next chapter uh, next week. Uh, as you know that we cover uh, a general concept of excretion. Uh, and then we talked about uh, what are the excretory products uh, that are generated because of the metabolic reactions. And then we do uh, we cover a most important cycle, uh, which is a nitrogenous waste cycle in, you, in, in your body, how urea is generated. And then uh, uh, this is coming from in logical sequence. Then we uh, went further to talk about what system is participating in excreting urea from your body. So uh, we build some concept on human excretory system, the kidney itself. Uh, what are different, uh, how they are located in your body, what are different parts of kidneys, uh, is your, if you remember that, uh, what are the functional units, uh, especially the nephron, uh, how does it work, what is glomerulus, and then how urine is formed, because you know, if metabolism is taking place in your body, uh, it's constantly generating uh, reactive species or molecules and some chemicals that are not needed by your body, so it has to be uh, eliminated from the body, and uh, that is done through most predominantly uh, through kidneys, and then uh, and we call it through urine, like how urine is formed, the urine formation, and the in the process that we have discussed. Uh, two major processes are involved in urine formation: uh, filtration and reabsorption. Filtration is to to get rid of the things that the body does not need and then reabsorption, what exactly we need, right? Uh, and different parts are, so we'll, we'll inshallah have some question, and I, I'm sure that you have that concept. Uh, so kidney is integral part of your physiological system. So a person cannot survive without kidney. Uh, we, we have realized this. If you look into the scientific discussion that we went through in this chapter, uh, uh, if kidneys are not functioning due to any reason, is because of the infection or due to damage to the kidney due to any other reasons, or even gradually when uh, uh, age process, it, it, it does um, affect the renal and all other system of your body. So if kidneys are not working uh, properly, then you should have some way to get rid of the waste product. Otherwise, otherwise person will not survive. So one of the most important thing, there are two approaches that are clinically used. We are, used this, we are using this in the hospitals for those patients who, whose kidneys are not functioning properly. One is the uh, dialysis, and inshallah, uh, Sundas will start in a while, and then uh, dialysis is needed somehow of, for those patients who, whose kidneys are not working properly, but still, uh, they don't need any transplant because the best thing is the transplant, kidney transplant. You take the kidney uh, from any donor and it can be transplanted surgically. Uh, this sur surgery is really very successful these days, but it's very expensive and to maintain it is uh, again a big challenge. Uh, you have to have some drugs that definitely would help the kidney to function in your body, but at the same time, it may expose, it may increase the risk of infections and many other, uh, other uh, physiological abnormalities. So you could, you could appreciate the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the beauty of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that how perfectly we have this system. When you lose any system, may Allah, may Allah protect us uh, from, from, this, uh, from this harm and the, 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 uh, from any, any damage to our body. This is a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We appreciate the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody on the face of earth could give you exactly the same kidney that is functioning every moment in your body, filtering the blood, taking care of the waste products in such efficient way, you are not aware of that. It's, it's the cells are constantly working and we are not aware of that, how they are working. You just take some food, some nutrients, drink water, and then uh, the rest of the thing you hand it over to, uh, to the kidneys, okay? So uh, the rational, you have to say the reason why we will go for dialysis. Uh, dialysis, uh, we also call it sometimes hemodialysis because you are basically uh, dialyzing the, the blood. Uh, this could be done either for 
for renal patients, for example. And it could also be done for toxicity of drugs. If somebody has taken or dosage of drug, of course, uh, excretion would take time. So if the drug is toxic, patient can die. So the best approach, the quick approach would be to do hemodialysis. Some drugs that are free in the blood, they can be easily removed. Those chemicals can be easily removed from your body very quickly. So uh, inshallah, when we, uh, when we discuss these uh, uh, concepts, I would say, first of all, look for kidney dialysis, why it is needed, one thing, and then how it is done, and what are the complications, right? So why it is needed, this is called rationale or reason or justification of that procedure, and then how it is done, what exactly is that machine that is doing, we call it a kidney machine or artificial kidney, sometimes people call it, uh, this is uh, needed, and, and why do we call it artificial kidneys? How it stimulates, it exactly not the same, it may resemble somehow, it, we call it simulation. It's simulating the plasma, the, the, the dialyzing fluid, we will discuss inshallah this concept. And if kidney dialysis is still not working, uh, people may go for kidney transplants, those who, those who can afford that. Okay, so inshallah, uh, go ahead with this Sundus. Uh, okay, so let's... Would you like to share your screen or... Yeah, okay. No, just give me a second. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, so basically we um, use dialysis, when we, we need dialysis when uh, our kidneys fail. So there, uh, first of all, I just um, wanted to share the causes of kidney disease or kidney failure with you. So the number one cause for kidney failure is diabetes. So this is because uh, patients, uh, diabetic patients have excessive sugar, which can damage the uh, capillaries that are, uh, the capillaries which are uh, giving, uh, supplying blood to the kidneys. And this sugar, as I told you, because uh, there is a high, there is high blood pressure in the uh, capillaries, so all the smaller substances are like squeezed through the pores in the wall. So the, this glucose, a glucose molecule is a very large molecule, so that's why it damages the wall of the capillary. So this is one um, reason why uh, you might have kidney failure. Another reason is due to high blood pressure. So a person with high cholesterol level will have high blood pressure. And I told you high blood pressure can, have, can lead to your capillaries rupturing. Okay, and so that can also lead to kidney failure. Uh, and then the symptoms of kidney failure uh, are fatigue. So th these are just some of them. Okay, so fatigue, uh, you're tired because there's uh, there are toxic levels of waste substances in your body and I mean you cannot get it out of your body and then you have insomnia which is uh, you, you can't sleep at night. You have itchy skin because there are some salts in our body that um, are only removed by the kidneys and if they're not removed you can have skin irritation. And there's also frequent urination because the kidney fails to reabsorb the needed substances. So there's a lot of water and there's too much urine. So there's frequent urination. And because the kidney has failed, now substances which are needed by the body 
are not getting reabsorbed and some substances which would not be taken in by the kidney are getting inside the urine such as proteins so the proteins can cause the urine to be foamy or bubbly so or leg and ankle swelling that's also because of the toxins loss of appetite nausea again because of the imbalance of substances um there's also you you can also experience metallic uh, or ammonia breath because uh, urea has that amino group and we can also have tremors or shakes because the brain is not stable um so the treatments for this are two types okay and uh, we should really take care of our kidneys because both neither of these treatments are i mean easy so there, there are two types, kidney transplant and dialysis. So kidney transplant is also of two types. It, you can uh, have a kidney donated by a living donor or a deceased donor. So a living donor can be your family or friend who matches with your, uh, who matches your DNA type. I mean, very similar. You cannot have the exact replica of gene, but yeah, very similar. So you have to have the same antigen so that the body does not reject that organ. A deceased donor is um, a person who died suddenly. Now, suddenly is important because uh, the kidney still needs to be able to function. If the, if the body was lying around for like a long time, the kidney can, you know, it's uh, stopped receiving the blood supply and it stops working, so it's of no use. So, um, and the other way is dialysis. And now there are two types of dialysis, hemodialysis and uh, peritoneal dialysis. So this one's outside the body, this one's inside the body. Okay, so first I'm going to explain hemodialysis because this one is pretty similar. Um, so first of all, if, you, if a person does not get a donor, a living donor or a deceased donor, they have to go for dialysis. There is no other option. Uh, for hemodialysis, it takes place outside of the body. So um, the blood needs to flow out of the body and then be cleaned by the dialyzer and then come back inside. Okay. Uh, so basically, we need uh, we need to circulate the body, uh, all the blood in the body through this machine. So this can take four hours and you have to visit the hospital like three times a week, okay? And this can be an artificial kidney, but obviously the natural kidney is way more efficient. Okay, so, um, so first of all, the way we take all of this blood, so this, there's, there's so much blood in the body and we need to get it done fast and because it takes so much time. So we need to, uh, to reach the blood, we need to create this gateway and we call it a fistula. Um, so there are two ways a fistula can be made. And the reason it's made is that um, uh, if this was a normal vein and if you sucked on it, so I mean, imagine this was a straw. And if you suck on a straw real hard and if there's a lot of pressure, uh, is gonna collapse on itself because of the pressure. So to prevent that collapsion, that collapsing of the vein, we need to get a surgery done, which can get the blood out at the rate we want without letting the vein getting collapsed. Uh, so without letting it collapse. So we need to connect the artery to the vein. Why? Because connecting to the, uh, connecting the artery to the vein will short circuit the blood. So if I joined two blood vessels like this, so this is the vein, this is the artery, the blood is flowing through the artery uh, is going to have a shortcut. And uh, so instead of flowing all through the body, it can just use this opening goes into the vein and then the vein dilates enough for the doctor to put in the in needle that's needed for the blood to flow out of the body. But if the 
So th this has a lot of complications, but if this doesn't work, if uh, and we're doing this externally, so uh, I mean, um, the bl blood vessels near the skin are really small. So if the blood vessels are too small, we would need to go for another method, which is mentioned in the book. And that is by placing a tubing under the skin, uh, which is called a graft, okay? So this graft works in the same way, basically, but instead of joining them up, um, like bringing, instead of joining them up by bringing it closer to each other, we create a third tube which uh, connects the artery to the vein and it's the graft. Uh, uh, and I mean, all the blood, so again, the blood is short circuited, so the blood can flow into the vein and you can puncture it from there and get all the blood in the dialyzer. So this is the, these are the two ways in which we can get the blood out. So now we move on to the machine. Uh, the way the machine um, cleans the blood works as a kid. So the machine looks something like this. Uh, we have a better picture in the book. I'll show you that diagram too. Uh, so this is the machine and it has tubes in it through which the blood flows. Uh, they're made by the skin tubing. And uh, outside these tubes are is the dialysis fluid. Uh, and so the, so this the blood flows through these tubings. Okay, so the blood is flowing here, and uh, the flu the fluid over here needs to be in needs to be just right, and it differs patient to patient because uh, if there first of all there needs to be zero urea. So zero urea over here, zero percent urea, so that there's a concentration gradient and urea diffuses out. Then, second of all, um, if there is something missing from the blood, like salts, we need to make sure that, for example, sodium salts. Uh, so we need to make sure they're in higher concentration so that they can diffuse into the blood. And things that we don't want, uh, things we don't want to add nor remove why, 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 needs to be why? in exactly the same uh, in exactly the same concentration so that they neither move out nor in. Okay, so we need to maintain that balance because this is, this is gonna go back in the body and these need to be really clean. And then because this is whisking tubing, it acts pretty much like the real kidney. Uh, so large molecules like protein cannot why, why, move out. Uh, this blood then goes back into the body and uh, so then uh, the body, is, uh, the blood is now clean. Okay, so the other type of dialysis, the one that was inside the body is done by filling the abdomen with this dialysis fluid. So that's kind of um, weird, but so that, that works for some people who can't get uh, a graft or surgery done. So, uh, so it's it's the 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 dialysis fluid is poured in through the belly button, and it you need to give it a region, and then the substances that you need to remove from the blood diffuse out, and then that that fluid that fluid then leaves the body, and that's another way. So it's just the same thing, but it's inside the body. Uh, now, uh, we, uh, so if we get a donor, so if we get a donor, I told you there uh, were two would, would, uh, could, could you please go to the, because you already discussed the uh, dialysis process and you talked about different uh, components of this procedure. So if you could fill the diagram in the figure we're in the book, which is 12.8. So just to, integrate those things and then you will go for the transplant yeah here you could see you talked about i think if you go by the by the labels uh, there's arterial blood flow and there's a shunt what is a shunt shunt is added to allow arterial blood to enter a vein and then it's withdrawn for the dialysis so would you like to explain what exactly is the shunt is this uh, uh, basically it's the same thing as the graft 
this is a graph. Shunt, shunt is basically meaning alternative. So it's, it's not the usual pathway where all the blood flows. Uh, but you know, uh, as Sundus mentioned here that uh, this connection is important, first of all, to prevent the collapse, one thing. And, uh, and it's also mentioned, I think, in your book, a very good point that uh, it allows a more amount of blood as well, because you are basically draining from from the uh, from the artery and vein together. And you could see here in the figure after the graph, they have connected this vein with the dialyzer, the machine itself. So there is a small pump uh, which will withdraw the blood. So more amount is passing through the dialysis or dialyzer and dialyzer is, uh, as she mentioned, tubing and also the the inlet and outlet for the uh, for the fluid. And this fluid is extremely important. You are basically simulating or uh, resembling uh, the plasma. So the things that you don't want should come out of the blood. So you should put that, add those uh, like sodium, for example, glucose and part of potassium as well. But you don't want to put in this dialysis, uh, dialyzing fluid any any uh, urea because you want to have an efficient concentration gradient so that the urea can go out. So this is the whole uh, procedure as she explained. And there's also a filter here. Uh, would you like to tell something about this filter, why it's needed? Yeah, so I, I actually forgot to mention this. Uh, the When the blood flows through the uh, dialyzer, uh, it so this is obviously a foreign region. So it starts clotting and we don't want the clots to get stuck in the veins and blood vessels so this filter keeps the clots in uh, over here and doesn't let it you know flow inside the body so yeah and also foreign particles if there's anything by by chance because this is outside your body and no solid particle should enter the vein because it can block especially the micro vessels and if it is in the uh, pulmonary system or on the heart, so it, this could be lethal. That's why filter has to be there to make sure that the clean blood is going. And uh, you can regulate uh, this uh, dialysis uh, by regulating the composition of the, of the fluid in the machine. You could see here on the, the pinkish uh, one, which is dialysis fluid getting in. So, and there is another dialysis fluid getting out. So in this, uh, the tubing through which the blood is passes, uh, that is basically a partially permeable membrane. So there's, that can work just like how your glomerulus is working. So they are basically resembling, this concept is based on the glomerulus function where there is a, a high pressure and this pump is also maintaining good pressure. You could see here and why this pressure is needed here. Uh, what do you think, which pressure should be more? The pressure of the blood inside the tube or the pressure of the dialysis fluid? Blood, the pressure of the blood. Yeah, the pressure of the blood, why? Because it's uh, coming in at uh, fast speeds. And it's it is... coming with a fast speed, but the speed you can easily reduce as well. So do you want to reduce it? You want to keep the high pressure inside the tube or you could adjust it? I mean, you could decrease the pressure. It will not make any difference. Yes. Do you think so? Yes, sir. We can decrease. You can decrease. If you decrease, will it affect the efficiency of dialysis machine? I don't know. It might affect little. I think we need the high blood pressure because we need to squeeze the um, waste substances out into the dialysis liquid, the fluid. Recap something, how you can integrate how the filtration was taking place in the kidney. Yes, raise your hand. Okay, if you remember, what was the pressure in the glomerulus? You remember that the blood which is, is added to the kidney uh, through the glomerulus it is flowing very highlighted. So you have more. High pressure. So that is highly important to squeeze out 
natural chemicals or the or the metabolism should should come should speed out of so this machine is that glomerulus Oh, okay. I guess he was having um, a connection problem. He'll come back. So basically, I think we do need a high pressure to um, uh, because it's the same thing as the kidney. So uh, we do need a high pressure to like let it, um, um, uh, you know, just uh, just the same thing in the kidney. So you you I mean, well, to allow for it to like pass through the pores of the whisking tubing and go uh, into the diastasis fluid. Okay, so I think I should um, just continue with the kidney transplants. And when he'll come back, I'll speak. Okay, so the two types of kidney transplants. So uh, the two types of kidney transplants are by a living donor or a deceased donor. So a living donor can be a family or friend, but we need to make sure that they are matching why how like they need to have the same antigens so like if you remember from uh the immune system uh uh if when they whenever there was like a foreign body the the if there was like a pathogen there were special chemicals on the surface of the pathogen which helped the white blood cells in our body recognize them right so the same way, every single person has different antigens. So we, we need to make sure that our antigens are matching so that our body doesn't take it as a pathogen and start making white blood cells against it, start attacking it. And we also have to make sure that the blood type is same, <laughs> but uh, that's usually um, for blood transfusion, but it's better. And we can also look at the DNA makeup uh but for the deceased donor we need to do the same thing we need to take the same precautions uh but we have to make sure that it is someone who died suddenly so that the uh, uh you know the uh, the organ didn't stop working altogether and it just like it, it could be someone in a car crash so basically that person would have uh filed um you could say a will or something um and said that uh, uh if i die my organs can be used like for donation so if he does have that we can use his organs for people who need it and uh we have to make sure that the kidney is still functioning and if there is no donor which is not possible there is always someone who needs it but if there's no donor we need to keep it in a refriger refrigerator sort of and make sure that it keeps functioning and it doesn't Can I ask like... a question? Yeah. Someone who had died recently or suddenly? Suddenly. Okay. The region and where I'm not sure I am outside is no but I'm showing you from a distance place. Uh so uh, so you go ahead. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Your voice is breaking. Momina, do you have a question? I just wanted to say that I cannot understand what you're saying. The voice is breaking. You don't understand what? Like, what the sir just said right now, I could not hear it at all and did not understand what did he say. So you didn't understand the deceased donor part? 
Yes. Okay. So uh, yeah, I can repeat. Uh, basically, a deceased donor is. Connection from I'm sorry, I can't hear you. So a deceased donor is someone who died suddenly and uh, suddenly and not recently. You know why? Because it could be someone from long ago, we could refrigerate the organ, as I told you, but suddenly because you do not want that organ to stop functioning, especially like, okay, so like forget the kidney for just, just think of a heart. If someone died recently, uh, suddenly, If someone died suddenly, uh, there is a high chance that his heart is still, you know, in good shape to function. Same goes for the kidney, same goes for any organ that you want to you know, donate. So uh, someone who died suddenly, like in a car accident or something, um, uh, and if he has like a form written out and he has like during his life, uh, written that after my death, someone can use my organs. So then you can, uh, he, so the paramedics usually take their organs for donations. Okay. Um, so then, so the, I think that's it. Okay. So that's the end of the chapter. Uh, then I want to do the questions on page 159. So those, uh, can, can, can you please uh, just hold on for a while? Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, could you check your internet? It shows uh, red signals. It means your internet connection is really slow. So are you connected to the proper router? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I am. Can, can you guys hear me? Yeah, there was some interruption in your voice. I, I'm not sure it's because of your internet connection or... Oh, okay. I hope you guys can hear me now. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So who, uh, who wants to ans answer these questions? So the first question is, what is a kidney tube you? You can raise your hand. Momina? A kidney tubule or a nephron is what makes up kidneys. What is the name of the tubule, kidney tubule? Nephrons. Oh, okay. Yes. Nephrons. Yeah. So, uh, good job. So, which blood vessels bring blood to the kidneys? So, pay attention to the word bring. Momina? Okay, after this, I want someone else to answer. Momina, go ahead. Renal arteries. Yeah. Yeah, good job. Uh, now, the third question is, what is a glomerulus? Anyone other than Momina? Yes, somebody else should contribute. What is a glomerulus? Uh, we mentioned this again here in the dialysis machine. And you remember on the function of the kidney, the function of the unit. So you have a whole diagram that shows glomerulus. So can look even, at the, you can even go ahead, flip through the book. That's fine. Yeah, look at the book and look what exactly the glomerulus looks like and then what is its function. So, uh, yes. sh should I just ask randomly? Yeah, okay, sure. If the uh, people are around, yes, you could. Ajwa? It is the tangle of the blood capillaries which are present in the cup of the renal capsule. Yeah, good job. That was that was really nice. You you know Excellent. it. You should have raised your hand. That's okay. answer, yes. Why is the high blood pressure needed?
Anyone? Um, I just repeated this. Ahmed? Yeah. Yeah, so that the substances could diffuse True. water and the True. other substances. So that the substances can easily pass, yeah. High yeah. pressure is through the so, pores. So uh, just one, one more question. How this high pressure is developed in the glomerulus? What is the mechanism? We have discussed that. This is another question. Just to question or yes, uh, who is going to tell it? You could answer. So this you could uh, choose uh, some raised uh, hands are raised. Oh, okay, Momina. Mean blood vessel splits into many suddenly, so the high blood pressure is developed. Yeah, so Just the blood vessel narrows down. Narrows down. This is one thing. There is another also another mechanism. This is one 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 part that is contributing to building high blood pressure. What about the flow of drug, uh, sorry, blood towards skin? Yeah, who, is, who can answer their three hand, hand, three hands are raised? So you could pick one that has not participated previously. Okay, so this. Uh, Ahmed. Or Momina, uh, I can just see, uh, okay, Ajwa. The blood vessel which brings the blood to each glomerulus, it is wide, but the ones that take the blood away, they are narrow. That's very nice, exactly. So you have two uh, uh, mechanisms here. One is exactly the branching, as mentioned by Momina, and then Ajwa is saying that the, uh, the, the vessel which is bringing the blood is wider than the one is uh, draining the glomerulus. So that's why the blood cannot easily leave that area and it will definitely uh, increase pressure in that and this is needed. And how we maintain this high pressure in the dialysis machine? Because uh, this is actually regulated and the kidney is regulated by central nervous system. But what about dialysis machine? How we can maintain high blood pressure, uh, sorry, high pressure, yes, inside the machine? Uh, Ajwa? Yes. Oh, okay, Ahmed. Here's a pump which keeps the blood pressure high. Yeah, that, that's true. Yep, yeah, yeah. We have a special pump over there, and that pump is uh, maintaining high pressure inside the, the capillaries, inside the tubes of the dialysis machine then the dialysis fluid. Dialysis fluid is coming in, entering the machine at a low pressure than the blood. So that is again needed so that you can squeeze out those uh, unneeded products, you know, urea and some salts, electrolytes and stuff like that. Yes, okay, next question. The next question is name two substances found in the blood which you would not find inside a renal capsule. So not, not two substances that you would not find in a in the urine, but the renal capsule. So keep that in mind. So the reabsorption has not taken place. Who wants to give this a try? Momina? You know one only most protein molecules. Uh, what, what is, uh, so protein molecules and another one? I only know one. You know only okay. one, okay. Ajwa. What about Afan? Afan, you could answer? Yes, Afan? Yes, Hosema, you have some answer? Ajwa? Ajwa, yes. Red blood cells. Yep. Yeah. That's true. Very nice. Excellent. And why they cannot squeeze out? Why they are not there in the capsule? Ahmed? Yeah, what is the reason? The holes are too small for them. Yeah, Sorry, exactly. 
She's, he said that the holes are too small for them, so the pores are too small for them. Yeah, in another way, they are bigger molecules, okay? So the, these albumin and red blood cells are bigger molecules. So in what condition you would still see uh, albumin and red blood cells in the capsule? In what conditions? There are some conditions you would still find these uh, proteins and red blood cells even in the urine. So Samia, do you want to give it a try? Just think about it. Not necessarily that you are 100% right. Guess yeah. what, what comes to your mind. Try to participate, please. Fatma? Fatma, you want to try? Yeah, sure. Um, okay. Um, Could you explain some of this? Okay, so the um, what was the question again? The question is that you still find in some conditions. Oh yeah, so um, that's with when the blood vessels are damaged, when the kidney is not. Correct. Excellent. Okay. Yes, blood vessels are damaged due to infection, or high blood pressure, or diabetes, for example. So that is why we uh, regularly check renal function in diabetic patient in a hypertensive. Uh, the, especially in old age, uh, this is very, very important. Excellent. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Okay, so, uh, list three substances which are reabsorbed from the nephron into the blood. So now they're talking about reabsorption. Someone other than Momina and Ahmed. I mean, unless you guys want me to randomly. What about Ibrahim? Guys, Ibrahim can answer. Ibrahim, do you want to give a try? It's not, as I mentioned, this is a mutual, uh, uh, you know, learning. So don't have, you don't have to worry if you are coming up with the wrong explanation. This is absolutely fine. I just want, we, are, we like to know your thought process. At least you try it. Whatever comes to your mind regarding this renal function, we have discussed some concept. I think you could just go back to the, that part in your book and uh, you could recall whatever you know from, from, from our discussion. So Samia raised her hand. Uh, Samia, yes, you want to yes, give it a yes. try? Glucose, water, and proteins? Glucose? Yeah. Glucose and water. And what was the third thing? Proteins. I, I can't hear you. Is proteins. she saying proteins? Yes. Yeah, proteins actually are not there in the urine, yeah. okay? Because proteins are bigger molecules. So, the, so yes, the, you're right, water, glucose. But the, the proteins never entered the uh, renal capsule, so they're not there. Yes, yes. Even if they are, if for any reason, excreted, they cannot be reabsorbed. So, yes, water, glucose. You want to try? No, amino acids, glucose, water, mm -hmm. and some salts like calcium and sodium. Yeah, That's perfect. Yes, perfect. All of Excellent. That. Yeah, some salts. Potassium, bicarbonates, and you know, they are sodium, for example, will be reabsorbed. Most of the sodium is reabsorbed. Bicarbonate, glucose, in the proximal tubule. Remember, you go back to the previous lecture, you will see the structure of nephron, uh, how it is reabsorbing uh, the electrolytes and, and the things that you need. Okay, good. Okay, so then the last question on this page, what is urine? Ajwa? It is the solution of urea and some salts dissolved in water. And one key term? Yes, one key term. If you will just take these compounds and dissolve in water, so what do you call it, urine? Just, just think harder. A solution of urine salts dissolved in water. And which is? It's filtered by the kidney, right? This is the right thing. Then. Yeah. So it has to be filtered. The plasma, the water which is filtered 
through the kidney. It contains the solution of urea and salt. It's called urine. And yeah, that, that, that's true. So it's not a just simple solution that you make yeah, through the kidney. Uh, it does have other uh, other components, uh, but uh, you will not go to the detailed analysis of urine sample. But yes, the definition is correct. If you write this definition in the exam, that's filtered by the kidney in a solution of urine, urea and salt, this is called urine. Yes. Okay. Correct. Okay. So um, now we can do the end of chapter questions. And if you guys have any questions, uh, you can ask. Yeah, there are a few pathways. Ahmed, do you have anything? Uh, Ahmed and Ajwa, they want to contribute some, something? No, uh, sir. Yes, Ahmed. No. Okay. So, uh, should I move on to the end of chapter questions? Yes. Sure. Uh, okay. So, uh, question number one is copy and complete these sentences uh, using some of the words in the list. You may use each word once, more than once, or not at all. Um, so, do you guys all have the book? Or do I need to make this clearer? Can you make it clearer? Because I don't have the book. Okay, just so just give me a second. Let's share the screen. Yes, yes. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, so if you can raise the book, I think then it will be very clear. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, now? Yes. Okay. So copy and complete these sentences using some of the words in the list. You may use each word once, more than once, or not at all. So I want you guys to raise your hand. Okay, and I'm just going to call out the names and you can unmute yourself. Excretion involves the removal of dash, dash, of dash from the body. Ajwa? Just Based the first fact. Based okay. From. okay. Uh, Momina? Yes. Uh, uh, so you were raising your hand. Metabolism. Correct. Uh, now, uh, this is the no, no, then I let me just read the first sen uh, the second sentence. Uh, carbon dash is produced by all cells during dash and is excreted by the dash. Okay, so um, Ajwa carbon dioxide, uh, Momina respiration. Ahmed? Lungs. Yeah. Uh, urea is produced in the dash from excess dash dash and is excreted by the dash dissolved in water to form Ajwa. I want more hands raised. Produced in the liver. Yeah, from excess, um, Ahmed. From excess of? Amino acids. Yes. Yes, and it's excreted by the uh, Momina. Kidneys. Right, dissolved in water to form Okay, now I want someone else. Um, Usman? Or Fatma? Fatma, you wanna give this a try? You don't have to be right. So it's all in water to form what? If urea is filtered through the kidney and is dissolved in water, so you would call it what? Urine? Yeah. Yes. And, and there's another trick also. Uh, whenever you are using uh, your answers, you know, different options, make sure that 
grammatically it goes well with the sentence. There could be things like, for example, you could also put other words, but it will not go with the sentence, structure of the sentence. So you could also look, there is also another clue, you know, sometimes you could see like carbon, of course there is dioxide. This is, uh, I think, very clear clue, but uh, it's not given an exam like this. They just, I think, just wanted to give you something easy, but you could use your grammatical sense, you know, the, the phrases, the structure of the sentence would help you. If you if you put that particular option and then read it out, does it make sense? Does it go well? Or there's some jerk in the in the reading, so it shows that it's not good. I mean, uh, definitely you have to be very clear about the concept. But if you are not clear at that time, this is another way to answer fill in the blanks. Although it's not recommended actually in standardized exams, fill in the blanks. But it's just for the revision. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the second question is explain the difference between each of the following pairs of terms, ureter and urethra. So, sh should I pick randomly? Yeah, I think it's better. Yeah. Okay. Mm, Afan? Okay, Ibrahim? Ureter is the uh a tube which makes the urine go into the bladder and yeah. urethra is the part of the body which which uh, make uh, so it's all the urine pass tube. out of the body yeah so it, both of the tubes lead urine but the difference is that ureter leads the urine from the kidneys to the bladder to be stored and urethra leads it outside the body now, so I think the whole, the whole the whole answer would be that you should take both part of the urine. Ureter, ureter is bringing urine from the pelvis, right? Collecting yeah. the urine from the pelvis and draining it into the bladder, and then from the bladder, actually, the urine is passing through the urethra outside the body. Yeah. So yeah, this is the difference. You have two ureters, okay? For for each kidney, you have one. This is collection kind of a tubing that would connect the bladder. For for each kidney is connected. If you remember from the figure, and urethra is just single tube pass, passage and there's for the uh, uh, leave the, the the urine can leave out of the body in, through, through your retina, yes. uh, now urine and urea someone new uh Hosanna? you want to give this a try yes give a try You don't Ibrahim have to okay, Ibrahim. Or yes. Yes. okay, yes. Ibrahim. Uh, the difference between urine and urea. Urine is the final waste which comes out of the urethra, and urea is the waste produced and in uh, it is in the blood. So the byproduct of metabolic reactions. Yes, the viral reaction, urea. But you're in scientific definition that is given in your book. I think uh, you're right technically, but usually this is not the definition. This is the pathway for the urine to exit the body, the, the answer. A, so trick, urine, a trick for the difference is that you define each of them. You're going to find the difference yourself. Yes, okay. yes. What is urine? Ajwa defined it for us. Or maybe something. yeah, she defined for dissolution of salt and and urea. It's, it's actually excreted by the kidney, so it's a solution of urea and salt. It's called urine. Okay, yes, go ahead. Okay, now uh, part C: excretion and ejection. Can I tell? Oh uh, yeah. Excretion is the removal of uh, liquid waste, and ejection is the removal of feces. Mm, yeah, so I think you have to again. Uh, this somehow near, but it's not the scientific definition. Uh, by this definition, probably you qualify for uh, maybe half marks. If uh, so three marks are probably you get around one or one point five. 
Okay, so but, let's give others a chance. Usman. The materials discharged during the process of digestion are anthracis matter left over from the process of digestion. Excretion, on the other hand, discharges metabolic waste products. Yes, yeah, yeah. so that, that's, that's exactly complete. And the metabolic waste products excreted by the kidney or excreted from the body. You could also give an example such as, for example, urea or carbon dioxide and some salt or other products. And ejection, as you mentioned, is undigested material. It's not part of your body. It's not part of any metabolic reaction. So that is called ejection. Ejection exit the body without involving, without being part of the body. E, -L -E for exit. It exit your body, no, but uh, not part of the metabolic reaction. This is the main difference. So be focused on this is core knowledge as well. So whenever you go back to, uh, to read the chapter and revise some concepts, make sure that you have understood the, the definition. You have understood the difference between excretion and ejection. So now question number three. The diagram represents several different types of molecules in solution separated by a membrane. State which letter represents a water molecule. So, okay, see that? Okay. So which letter represents a water molecule? Uh, Afan? It's A. Yeah, so the smaller molecules that can easily pass through. Uh, state the type of membrane which is shown in the diagram. Samia? Partially permeable membrane? Yes. Yeah, so it allows some of the substances through but not others. Explain the processes by which molecules move through the membrane. Hosema? Osmosis. So they're saying processes. Osmosis is one of them. What's another Pro type? Yeah, there could be several processes, but especially for the, for the uh, you know, salute and all the other chemicals, different like B, C, D, and E, how they are passing through this membrane. It's very similar to osmosis. Canada? Yeah. Canada? Active transport. So it's Samia? diffusion. Yeah. yeah. So diffusion. you have to make, keep the concentration gradient in mind. You can Correct. see it's moving from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. Okay. Now the diagram below shows what happens during filtration in the glomerulus of a kidney. Uh, name the molecules that pass out of the blood plasma. So the molecules that move out of the blood plasma into the capsule. So you have the upper panel of the figure. You could see here the round circles and the shapes. And then the, the lower panel is showing to the rest of the kidney. So the first part is plasma or your blood. And this is a part the part the, the semi-permeable membrane of the glomerulus. And uh, then you have to name what exactly is passing through this membrane. Uh, Usman? Uh, or someone else? Afan? There are three molecules that can diffuse through the partially permeable membrane. Water, glucose, and amino acids. Wonderful. Yeah, well, that's exactly correct. Okay. Exactly the same. Explain how filtration differs from the processes explained in C. So how does filtration differ from the process in the kidneys? So the normal filtration. Um, Momina? In B, the substances pass through a partially permeable membrane and due to a concentration gradient but in filtration the substances don't pass due to a concentration gradient yeah that's perfect that's exactly complete and uh, so this uh, the, in the kidney we have a mix uh, like a combined system filtration and the concentration gradient so the large molecules aren't able to pass, but the small molecules are due to the concentration gradient, whereas filtration is only because of the size. Okay, so explain what happens to the molecules in the filtrate 
before the urine leaves the kidneys. So what happens to the urine before it leaves the kidneys, before the process is complete? Ahmed? Many substances uh, such as water, glucose, amino acids, and salts are reabsorbed. Yeah. Um, so how is that done? So this question carries five marks. That means we need to tell in detail. So can you tell me exactly how that's done? By osmosis and diffusion. Okay. It diffusion, but we call it a very specific term there. That how filtrators are hindered by the by the kidney, so they have a special special terms for that. If you don't use it, so that would definitely uh, uh, you your marks will be deducted. Reabsorption. Ah, uh, yeah, reabsorption. Yeah, that's very important. Things are, and you could give an example. The things that you need, for example, glucose and amino acids and, and some of the electrolytes like sodium, potassium, for example, are reabsorbed and urea is eliminated. Water is also eliminated and some other waste products are eliminated and that's taking place in proximal tubules, uh, lupa penle and distal tubule. They are basically handling these absorption, reabsorption process. While in the collecting tubule, some of the last time which are very good concept under the control of ADH, antidiuretic hormone. And uh, but yeah, but usually th that, that that part it has got more water channels. So here, sodium is not reabsorbed. Any amino acid glucose that is remaining, maybe whatever is the reason, it will not be reabsorbed here. Any solute cannot be reabsorbed in the collecting duct. They are not permeable. They are very rich in water channels. And we call it antidiuretic hormone. That is, again, related to the, I'm not going to detail, maybe when we have time, I will talk about diabetes insipidus and diabetes mellitus. Why we call it mellitus? The, 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 the urine actually is sweet. You know why? Because it, it has got more glucose. This call it's called mellitus. And insipidus is tasteless urine. It doesn't have any glucose, but patient will still pass a lot of urine without any any glucose in it. So th there are different pathological conditions. We're not going to detail. And I think very nice. They they you answered very well, mashallah. Your participation was yeah. great. And Sundus, mashallah, you explained things very well. Uh, one thing I think that probably you missed here in the kidney transplant, uh, which is very important, is the use of immunosuppressant. What are immunosuppressant? You can go back on page 159. Uh, the last paragraph, the last part of, oh no, not the second last, kidney transplant. I... So they are used immunosuppressant. Uh, why immunosuppressant is needed and what do you understand by immunosuppressant? If you are asked, uh, define immunosuppression in its role in kidney transplant. So what will be your answer? May I? Yes, go ahead. Some transplants, not just kidney transplant, but other type of organ transplants may not always be successful because there's always the chance of the patient's immune system rejecting the transplanted or donated organ. Therefore, as a, uh, as a byproduct, as a uh, the compensation, the patient needs to take immunosuppressants, which are drugs that suppress the immune system for the rest of the life, for rest of his life. And now the only problem with the immunosuppressants is although they suppress the immune system and allow the transplant, transplanted organ to work properly, but since it suppresses the immune system, so the immune system can't work well against other pathogens with infected diseases. So it, it carries 10 marks, you got 10 out of 10. This is exactly the scientific definition. I appreciate it, wonderful. Thank you so much, that's really great. That as you know, if you remember, Sundus already mentioned that close match is really good, uh, especially close relatives, your family members, because of the antigenicity. You know, you have close DNA makeup and genetic makeup is very resembling. So uh, the kidney which is transplanted would not be taken as a foreign uh, by your system, you know, because it, that your body, your immune cells are basically uh, is familiar with that kidney. But if it is related to someone distant, you know, not in your family, the chances are more. This is one of the major challenge in renal transplant that they are rejected. In even sometimes people are taking immunosuppressant. Why? Because uh, initially you want that the kidney should be recognized by the body gradually, you know, 
That is why you give immunosuppressant. Immunosuppressant are drugs, especially like cyclosporine, for example, isothioprine, for example. These are some of the drugs that are clinically used by patients. And the nephrologist and all the, the, the clinicians, especially your physician, will give so that your body should not reject the kidney. Because if it is rejected, definitely you'll see a lot of other problems. You know, Then you have to remove the transplant, and then um, again, it's a big, big issue. So they have to take it for the rest of the life to suppress the immunity. And then gradually, your, your cells and your body is basically uh, get acquaintance with this uh, foreign uh, kidney. So that will be somehow, so the donor and the recipient, if they are not closely matched, then you need high doses of recipient, sorry, the immunosuppressant, okay? So this you have to keep in mind. Yeah. I think this is good, yeah, this is a wonderful discussion. Uh, now, uh, is there any, any comment, any questions? So this you can take a few, uh, just one minute, and then uh, you could conclude the meeting. Yeah, so uh, if there is any confusion, you guys can raise your hand. So Ahmed and Afan, is there any confusion because your hands are raised? I forgot to lower it. Okay. So anything you guys want to add or ask? Uh, could you ask about the timing of the class? Is it okay? Or they want to change it so that more people can join us? And we wanted to have some uh, problem-based learning. I gave you a problem in small groups. And then you solve the problem and you come up with a presentation. I think uh, this is what uh, we are going to do maybe in the next session. So we need more students to participate in groups, uh, in breakout rooms, and then you will have time. And I will give you just a trigger. And this is called problem-based learning. That you are given a problem and then you think about that, use your knowledge, use your books, talk about it. Even you could call somebody at that time if you don't know. So it, it's absolutely right. Whatever resources you are using, the only thing we want that you justified the learning objectives. If I ask you that, for example, the function of nephron, so you should justify the function of nephron, different aspects of nephron functions and what are the components and what are different parts that are participating in the uh, renal filtration or reabsorption. So these are a few things, inshallah. So uh, you could send email as well, educationchannel at yahoo.com. If you have any comment, you want to change timing or, uh, I mean, if you suggest anything, the next chapter which is coming in sequence is coordination and response. You would go like that or you want me to pick any chapter uh, that probably is uh, like, for example, drugs and biotechnology is something which is very specialized and people are not very much uh, aware of, uh, of the drugs concept because it's usually taught in medical schools or at university level. And I could see some terms that are really uh, maybe very hard or maybe it's about the level of the students of grade eight and nine. So what do you suggest? We'll go in sequence, you think, or you want me to pick any other chapter to be covered next week, inshallah? Could I say that we go in sequence? In sequence. Yes. The sequence is good? You all agree yes, with sir. that? Yeah, yes, sequence. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, if there's anything to let me know, okay, we'll go in sequence. So the next would be coordination and response, okay? And sometimes yes, we may, may have little reading from the book, which is uh, just not too much, uh, but whatever is uh, related to the core concept, like the way immunosuppressant is written here, and you know, in the figures like pump and dialysis machine that we discussed, so so that you could easily understand. And if you want to change the methodology of the of teaching, you are most welcome to to let me know, and inshallah, definitely will modify. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, inshallah, and thank you so much. Have a have a nice day. You're welcome. Yeah. You too, sir. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz.